Hello guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. Now today what I'm going to be doing is talking to you guys about all the players who are out of contract at the club and giving you guys my opinion on who should be staying at the club and all the players who should be leaving the club. Now to start off the list we're going to be speaking about Scott Cuthbert. Cuthbert has been a great servant at the club. He's tried his hardest when it comes to his performances. Now for me he's been like on and off for me. Like when it comes to being a captain he doesn't fit my requirements of what a captain should be with regards to leadership from the back, um, organising the defence. Yes, we've got a decent defensive record. I don't believe that's just because of him. I believe that he is a good centre-half. However, when it comes to like leading the team, I don't believe he is capable of doing that. So, for example... We can see the goal. He's one of the first players to actually blame other players and he actually like puts his head down. That's not what a captain is. For me, he should be like a McCormack player. I actually wanted McCormack to be captain at the start of the season, but because of the fact is he can't play 40 odd games a season, McCormack, that was probably the reason why he wasn't captain. For me, Cuthbert can play higher. He has played League One football before, but I just don't think he can handle the the type of movement, the pace. Like we've seen him this season in League Two, where he's when he's played against better strikers, he just can't cope with. He just can't cope with it. The next player I'm going to be talking about is Alan Sheehan. For me, Alan Sheehan has the ability. I don't understand why he hasn't actually signed a new deal already, but he has the quality, the ability. He can play higher up. He has that ability to play higher up, and he's coped with. Like half decent strikers in this division. He's got decent at set pieces when it comes to corners and free kicks. We are slightly plan A when it comes to set pieces. We only have one option and that's just to give it to Dan Potts. But apart from that, he's very good at delivering the ball. He's very dangerous when it comes to crossing. And he is a decent centre half, believe it or not. Even though he's played left back for most of his career, he's actually a very good centre back. This season, I think he's helped Glenn Ray quite a lot this season, and Dan Potts. So, for me, he has that leadership which I think would be required in League One, and he obviously is good enough to play League One. And I don't see any reason for not keeping him, so I really hope Sheehan signs a new deal in the summer. The next player we're going to be speaking about is Dan Potts. Potts has had a fantastic season. I really wanted Dan Potts to sign a new contract in January. Goal scoring left back. Dan Potts is really good when it comes to attacking the ball in the air. Ever since like Wilkinson has left the club, we've been lacking that threat like from set pieces. Dan Potts allows us to have that threat from set pieces. I love him to stay at Luton because he's going to develop, he's going to get better, and he's going to become a like twice the player what he currently is now. Next player I want to talk about is Glenn Ray. Glenn Ray for me has developed massively since he signed for Luton. You can see his progress from the moment he signed. Glenn Ray's like distribution off the ball lets him down massively but that's going to come with playing time and getting better. Now I said this to, I think I mentioned this to my dad, I reckon if Glenn Ray stays at the club he is a future captain because he's learning from different players He's getting the leadership from Sheehan, and he's just going to get better. Next player what I'm going to be talking about is Mullins. Now, for me, Mullins was a disappointment. When we signed him, we, we signed this experienced, like, centre-half from Oxford. I can see why Oxford released him. He obviously was captain at Oxford. He didn't really show that leadership when he signed for Luton, and... I didn't get this experience lead to centre half. Like fair enough, he's done. There's there's been games this season where he's performed really well, but for me, he's been too injury prone. He hasn't been that leadership centre half which he was meant to be, and he was meant to be a goal scoring centre half. In fact, next player we're going to be talking about is Alan McCormack. Now I believe we should give Alan McCormack a one year deal with an option to extend it if he plays a certain amount of games. There's rumours going around that that's what the deal was actually meant for this season where he was meant to play a certain amount of games, but he hasn't reached that mark because he had that massive injury, which is understandable, but McCormack, he brings so much leadership in that midfield. He protects the back four so well. He brings that quality in that midfield. Without McCormack, 
this season. We did lack, we did miss him at a few games. There were games this season where we missed him. And he plays such a huge part. It's just a shame he is like 34 years old. I wish we had a, like a player like him, but five years younger. Since Pelly Roddick's been back in the team, it looks like McCormack's kicked him up the arse and he's just, he's just performed. And I think that's just because of McCormack. Give him a one-year deal. He's obviously played higher up. He knows what it takes to play League One football. He's capable of playing League One. Just hopefully he can play more games than what he has been. Next player we're going to be talking about is Oli Lee. Now, Oli Lee's been a different player from last year. He was playing in that defensive role which McCormack was playing, which he wasn't capable of playing. Like, he isn't a defensive midfielder. And I was saying to my dad at the time, I was like, Oli Lee is better going forward. He has that, like, better quality going forward. And even Nathan Jones and the players say, Oli Lee is the most technical player in the squad. And you can see that on the pitch. You can see that like, when we play against higher teams, he's that type of player who like performs in the big games. And you need that from a player who can stand out from the big games. Because when you're playing against big clubs, you need big players. And that helps, especially when you're trying to grind out a result. Next player we're going to be talking about is Jordan Cook. For me, Jordan Cook has not been good enough since he signed for Luton. He was signed as to be a striker, but Nathan Jones has been playing him as a number 10. He hasn't got the quality to play for Luton. I really don't think he has that quality. Watching him play, I just don't know what he brings to the side. Nathan Jones rates him highly, but I just don't see what he brings. Personally, I think he's let Nathan Jones down it slightly because Nathan Jones has defended him and he hasn't stepped up to the plate this season. He doesn't, he hasn't grabbed the goals. He hasn't been grabbing the assists. He hasn't been doing it this se this season, and he didn't do it last season. He had one decent game last season, and that was the, get the game against Doncaster away. But apart from that, he hasn't really had a decent like run of games. Next player we're going to be talking about is Lawson Diaf. Now, I can't really give a my review on Diaf because he's always been injured since he's been at Luton. He's always been injured, and then every time I do see him, he doesn't really put in a decent performance. He puts in an average performance. I can't really give my opinion on Lawson Diaf because he just hasn't played enough. And I think because of that reason, I do reckon Nathan Jones will get rid of him. I don't really see anything from Lawson Diaf which makes me go, right, he's got that something. I don't see anything. And the last four players which we're going to be talking about is Jarvis, Fenwo, Cotter, and Instead, I think that's how you say his name. But anyway, those four players, they're all young and still got time to develop as a player. I was disappointed that none of those four players actually went out on loan apart from Jarvis, but he went on loan to Bournemouth and, and like barely played any games. These four players, if you're not going to play them, send them out on loan. Otherwise, they're not going to develop. They're not going to get better. Like When you're young, you need to play as many games as possible. If you do that, you're going to get better. You're going to improve. I'll give all these four players new deals. Just give them maybe a two-year deal or a one-year deal. But send them out on loan if you're not going to play them. Like, what's the point of having them at the club if they're not going to play? Like, just send them out on loan, you know? And mate, if we are lacking players, like we've got a few injuries, just recall them back. What's the problem going to be? Just recall them back. What's, there's not going to be no problem in recalling a player back from, from loan if we've, we're lacking depth in the squad. So... Personally, that's what I believe Nathan Jones should do. So then, guys, that is the end of the video. I gave you my opinion on which players should be staying at the club and which players should be going. Let me know down in the comment section of this video who do you believe should be leaving and who do you believe should be going. Don't forget to drop a like on this video if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you are new to the channel. And I'll see you guys on Saturday when I give an overall seasonal review on how I believe the season went.